This is Jonathan Agger with Pro Boxing Fans, joined by Callum Smith. Callum here at the uh, Liam Smith Chris Eubank Junior press conference. Got heated as we expected. What did you make of some of the things Chris was saying to your brother? Um, just expected, really, to be honest with you. I think you know you've always got to expect that from Chris. He's Okay. Alex yeah. Island, just yeah, he's you know he, he tries to be a little bit unpredictable and he says stuff oh, that mate. gets. He's yeah. my old mate. He's my old mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he get he gets people speaking, he gets people talking, all you know, the sixty percent stuff with Ben and now the fifty percent stuff with Liam. It makes headlines, but you no, know, realistically, people in the game know he won't be fifty percent. He'll be as close to hundred percent as he possibly can be, and you know, it's a good fight. I think. They both got each other's respect, they both, both know they're in for the tough fights and they both need to be at the best to get the win, so it, it's exciting for the build-up, but you know, hopefully the, the, the fight's a little bit more exciting and you know, it, it should make for a good one stylistically. You're saying that Liam's an easier fight than Conor Ben, is that just mind games? or? Yeah, I think so, I think he doesn't want to sit and give Liam a, a too much credit. If he sits and says, oh, you know, this is a tougher fight, then it's, you know, it, it's giving Liam credit and probably giving Liam a little bit of belief, but... Look, I, I, Conor Ben, I don't no, I don't want to sit here and slag him and make it about him, but he's a welterweight who was unproven. Liam's you know, a, a light middleweight slash middleweight who's proven he's been at the highest level, he's been a world champion, and he's only lost to, to you know, really, really good fighters. So I think he knows it's a tougher fight, but no time will tell. We'll see on the night, but as a team, as a family, we're very confident in Liam's abilities, and you know, we believe he'll get the win. Like you say, it's a, a middleweight, this contest. Lim's mainly competed at 154, so is that a bit of a challenge, or is it the fact that he spars, I'm guessing, bigger men anyway? Yeah, he sparred bigger men. He sparred me most of me, most of me career. He's, look, he's a big, light middle, so I don't think he'll be a small middleweight. He, he's, you know, he's got decent size. He's physically strong himself. You know, he's got big legs and stuff, so if he believed the weight would be, be a factor, then he probably wouldn't have took the fight, or he'd have probably stuck down and argued to get Chris a little bit lower than the middleweight limit like Connor did but he never he accepted the 160 he believes no it'll, it'll suit him well and no it should make for a good fight your prediction do you think Liam can win by stoppage yeah he can do look I think in boxing at any level anything can happen Liam's you know, on a good run of form a good run of knockout so you know, definitely obviously Eubank's shown he's got a, a good chin over the years he's took some big shots off of big fighters so no, I think Liam on points is probably the, the safe bet, but I think no Liam definitely can. Liam can punch and you no know, whether it's dead or body, anyone can be hurt. So you no, know, he's not going to go in there looking for a point to win. He'll always go in there with the same mentality of if he fights anyone else to get the job done and get a job done inside the distance if possible. But you no know, stylist, this should make for a good fight regardless. Moving on to you, uh, what's the latest? Uh, better be fighting yard in January. The winner has to fight me after that. So. No, I could sit and wait, but I don't want to. As a fighter, I want to stay active. I want to keep the tools sharp, so to speak. So I'd like to fight myself in, in early in the new year and then you know, wait to see what happens with the winner of that fight and you know, get me shot in, in the summer. So it's kind of a sit and waiting game, but it's not. No, I want to. I know when I'll probably get the fight and be you no know, end of the summer, so to speak. So I want to sit and fight. I want to fight in the meantime. So speaking with my team trying to get a fight sorted for the new year and hopefully not us will have some news pretty soon How do you see Baturbiev against Yard going? It's a good fight it's an exciting one they can both punch obviously better with record suggests he can punch no one's seen the final bell with him but Yard's heavy handed himself and he obviously believes he's got the tools to do the job if it was a better man I'd back Betibev, he's you no, know, he's getting on, but he's yet to show any real signs of aging. So you've got to expect him to be at his best, and I think the best version of him should be a little bit too much for Yard. But you no, know, it's it's boxing, light heavyweight boxing. The, the two big men, he can both punch, so it should be exciting. But yeah, I'm I, I'm sad with Betibev. If Eddie Hearn say offered you Joshua Buatzi before maybe Baturbiev or Yard, whoever wins that fight, would you take that fight? Is that too much of maybe a risk before going into a world title? Um, no, not not really. No, if look if they make me an offer and the offer's right, then no, I'd fight anyone. I've, I think I've shown throughout my career. You know, I'm not gonna shy away from a fight with Josh Boatzi, but then call to fight Arthur Betterbev in the same breath. Do you know what I mean? It's I fight whoever. I've done that my whole career. I've you know I've fought whoever's been put in front of me. Obviously, I'm in a good position now, and I've got a lot to lose. But 
I'm not going to wrap myself in cotton wool. If I was to do that, then I'd just sit and wait till the summer and wouldn't fight anyone. So, again, we'll see. We'll see what the team offers. But you know, I want to fight early in the new year. That's the ideal plan. Whoever it is, I'm, I'm not too sure. But the goal is to fight the summer, win, and then go and become a world champion in the summer. Have you been guaranteed that shot against the winner? Or do you think maybe you know the undisputed fight against Bivol could uh, overtake that? Yeah, I think it could, obviously, the undisputed. But I just think with time and stuff... I think Bivol will probably fight Canelo in September and I'm not too sure, again I don't get too involved in it all but I think the WBC have stopped Russians fighting for the WBC title at the last convention, they're still standing by that, that stance so I think that rule would stop the undisputed for the time being so obviously Betabev's classed as a Canadian but Bivol's still classed as a Russian so I don't think the WBC would let him fight but look again I'm not I don't think I'm personally standing in the way of the fight if them two want to fight each other then no unification over that's a mandatory and as a boxing fan it's a great fight it's the fight I'd like to see hopefully I get my shot first and I ruin that the plans for that fight but again I'm I'm, I'm not involved in that. I'm not I'm not ruining the chance of that fight I think no, the WBC and their ruling might or just in terms of time and if Bivol fights in the new year and then fights Canelo in September I just don't think the time might fit but again we never know but my, my goal is to obviously fight for the, the title in the summer and we'll see Division's kind of on fire at the minute who would you say your top three is in order? Um, you can say it so Yeah I know, but again I think I looked at the ratings the other day someone sent me them and I think that the one in the world is Bivol 2 better to have 3 me and again I agree with it to be honest with you I think I think a while ago I was 4 and Ramirez was 3 which again I didn't argue it he's had a, a few more fights at light heavyweight than me I didn't argue that he was ranked above me and that's not me saying I think they beat me but you've got to valent your, your place in the divisions I believe I'm the best in the world but should I be ranked number one at the moment no I don't believe it I should and in my, I think Betterbev should be number one Bivol 2 I think a lot of people have got Bivol 1 now because of the Canelo win but it, no, it's, it's a toss up out of them too and then you know, I believe outside of the champions I believe I'm the best fighter in the world so I think I'm ranked number 3 but hopefully I can change that in the, in the next few months and I'll take the number 1 spot and uh, obviously Buddy McGurt in your corner now do you train with Dillian White? Uh, no we, our camps didn't go at the same time he started camp just after my last fight so no we, I haven't trained alongside him but again if he stays with Buddy and we're fighting similar times we, we probably will be in camp together but no, I'm enjoying training with him I think you know, his knowledge is unbelievable and I've had two camps with him and I believe I've improved as a, as a fighter in both camps and no, I'm looking forward to getting back in camp with him this time and just aiming to improve as a fighter I'm, you know, I'm a bit of a perfectionist I, I'm obsessed with getting better as a fighter and but he's similar he, he's a perfectionist he's constantly on me back over you no know, minor, minor mistakes and minor adjustments and it's annoying at times but I know it's only for my own benefit and when you start to see the differences in yourself you know it does give you that little bit of buzz and I'm, I'm excited and I believe you know it's a, it's a relationship that will finish with a world title hopefully I know you're a massive football fan so uh, tonight England win I think you'll probably agree but how far do England go in this tournament? I don't know I, I got asked before and it's it's been a strange World Cup I think it was always going to be with the timing of it and it, it, right in the middle of the league it, it's been a bit of a a strange one but no one's really set the world alight you know Argentina Germany they all seem they all had slip ups so I do think it's anyone so I think if there's a time to win it for England now it's probably now but you know, I'm not one of these it's coming home and stuff I, I wouldn't I wouldn't back them but I wouldn't be surprised if they've done it, it, it it's, I think it's anyone's this time and I wouldn't be surprised who wins it Finally did you see the sort of um, beef between Canelo and, and Messi online what, yeah. and what, what do you make of it? Yeah I've seen a little bit of it I think I don't know I think it's a social media these days any comment just catches fire doesn't it and no, it's making headlines, Canelo, Messi, and stuff, and I believe Aguero's jumped on it now as well. I think, though, know, again, I don't. It's just like wildfire on social media, and it spreads pretty fast. But it's making headlines in it, so I, I don't know. But it's, yeah, it's, it's it's entertaining. But again, I don't know how much how much truth's in it, how much Canelo's serious. So I don't know. But it's, I said, it's interesting, and not a surprise you're on social media these days. Not at all. Callum Smith, thanks for talking to Pro Boxing fans. We'll look forward to hearing some uh, fight news soon, hopefully. Thank you.